talked a lot about the renewed excitement for the franchise. Today was, I, I don't know how you would describe what you saw today from the fans showing up for this practice. Well, in light of the, you know, the past three seasons, it, 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 it was truly incredible. It was truly amazing and exciting. I mean, uh, first of all, you know, I, I, I really appreciate, we, we really appreciate the fans. Um, first and foremost, I, I, you know, I, I know it's always been there. They've always been there and they've always been supportive, especially when, you know, we've been out in the community and stuff. But lately now with the way things are, with the opportunity for them to come out here and knowing that this is where we are at training camp, to see them come out in, 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 in force today, that was excellent. That was outstanding. Our, our players really appreciate it. I know our ownership appreciates the, uh, the renewed interest and stuff, um, and I'm really appreciative of it. And for you, it, just in doing your job, it, how would you describe, like, moving forward here? Do you feel a sense of relief? Do you, how, how are you kind of looking at this season now with all this kind of renewed spirit around the team? Well, I think it's really cool just because, you know, now the focus, the primary focus – uh, and answering questions, really going to be concerned about the football team, the X's and O's, what's going on on the field. Um, you know, I, I know there will be questions eventually about the new stadium and about, you know, potentially, who knows, a new name. But um, I think the biggest thing is we can talk about the players and, and, and we can talk about what we're trying to do and how we're trying to get it done. Um, and, and, and I think that's probably the most important thing. Where does today fit in? Fans have been excited when you've been here before, the Tampa Bay playoff game, the Sunday night game against the Giants last year at home. Like, where does this fall in terms of your tenure and excitement you've seen? Well, I think it's right, one, right, right near the top. I mean, because it's, 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 it's before the season. It's before, you know, we've gone through training camp and, and preseason games. So that's what's exciting. And, 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 and I know a lot of people go, oh, you know, well, this team's been that, this team's been that. Well, you know what? It, this team was now let's let's talk about what we can become and, and that's what i you know we've been talking to players about all campus about you know this is about trying to determine and establish who we are going to be going forward and most than anything else you know you, you want to make sure that the culture is good um you know that the character on this team is good and then we're good as a football team we're good as football players and, and that's what we're doing right now in training camps trying to develop and grow these guys Emmanuel Forbes, I think, had his first pick of camp today. What are, what are you seeing from him, and, and what are realistic expectations for him this season? Well, I think realistic expectations is, are for him is, at every opportunity he gets is, is to play and play well. Um, he's a young man that works hard. He's a very smart, diligent young man when it comes to learning and trying to learn. Um, he's got tremendous study habits. He does the things that he needs to do to, to, to put himself in position. And then when you watch the way he plays, you see how he, he plays. Um, he practices the way I believe he's going to play, and that's hard and smart. I don't know if you think like this as a coach, but when you bring him in to address turnovers, his ball skills, are you thinking like, hey, we would love to get three or four or five out of him, or is it? do you not even go there in terms of concrete numbers? Yeah, yeah. I mean, concrete numbers are unfair because a lot of it has to do with circumstances. I mean, I know, and, you, and, you know, and, and I'm not comparing him to Sauce Gardner, but you know, I know a lot of people expect a lot of things from Sauce. Well, sometimes – People recognize it real quick, and they don't throw the ball his way. And then everybody's going to know, well, how come he hadn't got those numbers? So it's, it's about how he can impact the game and, and, and impact the takeaways. You know, a um, big part of the reason why, you know, we have such an emphasis on takeaways is because, you know, analytically looking at us, looking at where we were, I think we were somewhere around 27th in, in turnover uh, and, and takeaway margin. And the analytics show that, you know, take away here or don't turn it over there and, and, and you may potentially we could have won a game or two more and we know what happens if we had won a game or two more so the big thing that we want to stress is the continued effort of protecting the football and taking the football away hey Ron what's for an offense what's the line between taking what the defense gives you but dictating terms and you determining where the ball is going or things like that. What's that line for a coordinator for an offense? Well, I mean, it, it, it's – and when you take in what they're giving you, is it enough? You know, are you capable of moving the ball and sustaining those drives by throwing the check down, by throwing the quick throws, um, by, you know, by running the ball? Or every now and then, do you have to go ahead and, and try and make an explosive vertically? Um, and that's where the fine line is, it is, is what – you're taking what they're giving you is that enough to sustain it and that's what's got to be determined you know 
Um, I go back to a couple games last year that we had where when we were running the ball very effectively on first and second down and we kept putting ourselves in third and short situations, you know, we, we became really good at converting at third and short. So that's what you've got to be able to determine. And then, if not, when do you take that vertical shot for the explosive? That's the other thing that, you know, as, as you look at it, um, you, you have to find that fine line because you can't come out and put yourself in the deficit right off the bat and go for a vertical. And next thing you know, you're second and long. Um, you know, because, it, you know, it's shown if, if you're in second and long, it's 39% chance that you're not going to have success. It, it increases by 39% that you're not going to have success. The turnover rate increases. The, 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 the non-conversion rate uh, increases. So, again, you want to be good on first and second downs. So, uh, to that end, how did you feel about the uh, distribution of targets this week in terms of running backs, tight ends, receivers? It seemed like the, the running backs and tight ends were fed a lot, especially today. What, did you kind of, what do you kind of make of where, that part right now? Well, it's interesting because, you know, again, we are further along on the defensive side because we're basically in the fourth year with Jack, probably the, the, the second full year um, in, in our match system in terms of coverage or zone match. So we have a few more tools. Uh, a lot of these things our, our offensive guys are seeing for the first time because they don't see it commonly. They're not game planning for what we're doing on the defensive side as much as we're going out there and just playing what the calls are. Um, but to that point, that's how you handle something new. You go out there, you play the call, you use the techniques that's been given to you, and it should be able to handle pretty much what, what you're seeing. Um, now we have to learn how to do those things. And then just uh, quarterbacks, just what did you think of uh, Sam Jacoby in particular today? I, I thought it was pretty good. I know people say, oh, Sam had two, two interceptions. Well, on the first one he throws, he gets hit and gets sideswiped, and, and you know, he, doesn't, he doesn't complete the throw. The second one, the ball is tipped. You know, we, 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 we've got to be better than that. I thought he made some decisions that were really good. I thought the direction he threw the ball is where he's supposed to. Now his accuracy, he's got, to, he's got to bring that ball down a couple on some of the sideline throws that he had guys wide open. Um, I thought Jacoby handled it pretty good as well. Um, you know, a couple times he tried to force a couple balls in. Thank goodness those balls, you know, were incomplete. But, you know, overall I think they're, they're both doing a good job. I think they're both showing that they're getting the grass. You know, we have a long ways to go. We're going to continue with it one day at a time. I apologize. I'm sure you talked about the fans being here and all that, yes. but I'm curious, like, some of the impact, do you, what do you hear from the players or see from them that you feel like is maybe a direct Im impact of having this kind of crowd here? Well, I think first and foremost is you see the energy levels up, obviously. Um, the guys are excited about it. Uh, you see that it, 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 it brings a, a liveliness to, to practice. Um, you know, one of the really neat things, and I, I went up to Chase and I said, hey, we're going to have the kickers going. Can you see if we can get the crowd going? And he went over and, and got the crowd into it, and that helps us. I mean, because it, it simulates to a degree what Joey's going to feel, what Mike's going to feel when they're out there kicking field goals and extra points. So to have them come in and have the fan base get involved in practice, it helps us. It, it brings, you know, a little bit of sense to what the live atmosphere can be like around here, and that's what's exciting for us. And then with Jamin, coming off that the knee in the spring and – is he still – you still kind of working yes. his way back into getting to where he needs to be? And, and I don't know if you noticed, but what, what, what Jack has been doing is he's been using all different combinations of linebackers, um, you know, and, and working those guys primarily in the first and second bunches. Um, and it's been the same thing with our – if you notice, our nickel package, our buffalo package. You know, they've mixed all sorts of combinations of DBs back there too. You know, we're going to try and find the best – set of guys and put them out there, but we also have to be very cognizant of what potentially could be matchups. I mean, there may be times where you see Benjamin line up inside and other times, you know, it could, it could be Kendall on the inside or it could be Danny or, you know, or, or, or Wild Goose. It could be in any number of guys could be inside playing that nickel position. And then we turn around and we go and say, well, we're going to play Buffalo. And, you know, this week it could be Quan could line up as the Buffalo um, in, 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 you know, instead of Cam. Uh, it could it could it could be any number of, of combination of guys that could go down and, and play that position. So, Jack's got a, a, a great opportunity to see what what tools we have, and what combinations can work best for us. After three days in pretty high heat out here, did you notice the guys little being a little bit tired, a little bit of dead legs? You did. You saw a little bit of it. Um, and, and but the thing that I saw mostly was the focus and attention near the end of practice. You know. 
Uh, we had a few too many mistakes. We had some illegal procedures. We had an offsides. Um, you know, we blew a couple coverages. We blew a couple routes. Um, some assignments, and, and, and that's what our guys have to understand is you got to build this callousness, this toughness to, 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 to fatigue and, 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 and the heat. And, you know, coming out here, and, and that's where the fan base is important because now they get excited, they start cheering, the guys can get themselves refocused. I mean, like I said, I really appreciate it. I really do, and, and, and I hope the fans know how much, you know, they mean to us because we understand, and, and you know, and I've, I've, I've said it before, you know, I've played here back in the day. And when th this crowd gets going, it's about as good as any crowd in the NFL, if not the best. Right, nice cool. Thank you, guys.